Hi everyone. So quick recap. Last class, we have been discussing about sockel, fur sockel, fur fur sockel. So we understood the sockel, Salesforce object query language. We understood the syntax for the sockel and what are the Garner limits? We have gone through that. And also we have seen how to use for loop for the sockel. And also we have understood the DML, data manipulation language, right? There are two types of DML, atomic DML, non-atomic DML. We have seen with the examples also. And uh, then we have seen the exceptional statement, locking statement, right? So today, last topic. The last language construct is transactional controller. Transactional controller. Transactional control. So what is the transactional control means? Creating a save point. Creating a save point. during the Apex execution. During the Apex execution for possible rollback is called possible rollback is called as a transactional control. Transactional control. What is a transactional controller? For example, I'm executing a some code, okay? while executing it, it has a some save point. Save point is the one which will hold the entire data that is getting created or updated or modified, deleted, whatever is there. So save point is going to store the information. But in case if I wanted to roll back, then we, we can roll back using the transactional controller. So how to do that using the transactional controller? First one, to create a save point. To create a save point. First one, save point. SP equal to database. Database is class dot. We have a method called set save point. Set save point. This is the standard declaration for the save point. So during the execution of the program, if there is any issue, then I wanted to roll back the entire changes. If I wanted to roll back the entire changes, we can use how to roll back it. Again, there is a using the class database dot method called we have a rollback. I can roll back. So save point is data save point, not the program to save the, like it's a data save point, not the program. For example, all vehicle name plates, let's take a scenario, all vehicle name plates, I wanted to change from AP to TS. I wanted to change all the vehicle name plates from AP to Telangana state, right? And after changing it, I wanted to update the government record. I wanted to update the government. So this is the entire process. So during this process, during this process, in the middle of, like there are some 10,000 vehicles are there, which I wanted to change the nameplate from AP to Telangana state. Right, while updating the process, I got some error. Like something happened half, half of the number, like after the 5,000 reports, while converting to TS, there is a, some error happened. Right, when error happened, I wanted to roll back everything. I do not want to update the government record 
just whatever is completed right now because at the end of the day i have to update everything like there is a so much process is there i have to take a bunch of vehicles then only i can update in the next government record one two three records or something i cannot update all of the bulk i have to update in the government record so in that case what will happen if half of the way if it fails something then i want it to roll back so while roll back i can use the database dot roll back in real time we use this in real time we use this while implementing the batch apex class while implementing the batch apex class we do this we use save point sp equal to database class dot set save point method if i wanted to roll back i can roll back using the database dot roll back let's see one example so that you will understand clearly let me go to salesforce developer console okay so i'm not writing the program right where are we doing the our program from last 3 4 days for last 3 4 sessions we were just testing our code in the anonymous window right today what are we trying to do what are we trying to learn transactional controller so let's see how to implement transactional controller control let's say i am inserting the account account a equal to new account i am initializing it then i have a mandatory field called name a dot name equal to all new vehicles a dot phone equal to let me enter some number and then a dot that should be enough for inserting the for creating the account so simply what i can do insert a now after inserting let me go ahead and use the save point save point s p equal to database class dot set save point method right now again i'll update it a dot phone number equal to let's say two 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 now update a right update a so what will happen here the cursor will first come here it will initialize the account that means there is a container gets created at the database level now i am giving the field details is name and phone number inserting the a after inserting everything i am storing into the set save point database class and after that i am updating the phone number 222 and i'm using the dml update here we are using the two dml insert and update let me highlight this click on execute highlighted so now what happened let me go ahead and check whether it is created the account or not let me switch to the lightning click on accounts service console okay accounts so all new new vehicle is created right it created with phone number 222 that's what i am updating before it was 333 and later i am updating to 222 for example let's say that i am inserting another account right i am inserting another account now let me roll back as soon as i insert and after that i am updating the phone number after updating i wanted to roll back 
I want it to roll back. System dot save point. What is my system dot save point? Is SP. Whatever is inserted, right? Whatever is inserted till save point. I wanted to roll back this. Let me highlight this. Click on execute. Let's go ahead and check the accounts. It should not be having any account should not be created. All vehicles, then let me use this database dot rollback six six six. Highlight this point, execute the highlighted one. Okay. So now, if you see after save point, right? After save point, I'm updating the A dot phone number equal to, I'm updating seven seven. And next I'm using the update A. Then I wanted to roll back. Let me take this as seven, highlight this, Execute the highlighted one. So what happened right now? First I'm inserting with account, right? Whatever I'm updating it, till this point it saved perfectly fine. But whatever I'm updating it, I wanted to roll back this. So what it do, it created, but it created with the phone number 333. It's kind of a undo in um, like Notepad++ or Google Doc, Excel sheet, you are writing this, right? If you say Control Z, you will undo. Like I, do, I wanted to remove the text. It's kind of a undo thing. I wanted to undo whatever is updated. So save point will be available only during the execution or runtime. After the runtime, neither the save point or rollback will not be available. You will not see this after the uh, like after completing this. If you are executing any other method, you will not see that particular rollback or save point will not be available. Only the during execution of that particular method or that particular class any particular method if you are executing or particular code you are executing only during that time the execution time only only the during the execution time you will see okay uh, during the execution time you will see the save point and roll back after the execution, you will not find any time, anywhere. You will lose the save point and roll back. Now, now we are in a position, all our basic language construct is over. All our language construct is over. Right, what are the 11 points we have discussed? starting of the apex class it is over in other words we are going to we are going forward that means we should be very good in writing the programs from now onwards right because everything we have discussed so far all the 11 points of the language construct we have discussed now we are in a position to start writing the program 
we are in a position to start writing the core programming right but before moving to core programming before moving to core programming we have to understand the oops concept we have to understand the oops concept because the core programming starts with the oops the basic concept the basic concept is called a class we have a apex class right what is the apex class what is the class means you know the apex okay what is the class means it uses all the oops the basic concept and when it comes to the oops what is the oops note down whoever is taking the notes note down what is the oops oops is nothing but object oriented programming language object oriented programming language and what is this object oriented programming is object oriented programming is a paradigm brackets i'll explain this what is this paradigm bracket style object oriented programming is a it's a style using the object bracket instance of the class within the interaction of another class right using the object bracket using the objects bracket instance using the object bracket instance of class instance of class with interaction of another class with the interaction of another class method and their interactions is called as a oops so basically if i have to tell you in simple term in generic term what is a oops instead of going through the all these definitions in basic terminology oops is a style oops is a style like we have a language telugu right telugu is a language that andhra and telangana of state both are using the telugu but same language is spoken by andhra same language is spoken by telangana but both have a different slang or style right so this style is called as a this style is called oops if somebody is praising in telangana it looks like um, he is scolding because their language is little harsh or commanding whereas if somebody is praising in andhra it seems like a quite polite right but both are talking in telugu because their styles have the way of speaking styles have a different slang it represent different way your behavior represent something different right same thing with the oops oops is a programming style it's a style it can be used in java it can be used in dotnet it can be used in apex 
wherever you use. When you are using the OOPs in Java, same thing you will use, right? And in .NET also, you will use the same concept OOPs. And whereas Apex is also having the same concept OOPs. But what is the style here? What is the style? The style here is everything is an object. Stone is an object. Human being is an object. Everything is object. If you are talking about Apex, Salesforce, variable is an object. Right? Account is an object. Method logic is an object. Here, the word object is very popular. In OOPS, everything is treated as an object. In OOPS, everything is treated as an object. Right? Contact is a table, but we call it as an object. Contact object, account object. Right? Opportunity object. But those are actually table. But in, in OOPS, we call them as an object. Everything is object. That is the reason it's called object-oriented programming language. Which are the programming language you use? What are the program you do it? Whether .NET you do something or Java or C++, wherever you do. The style of object. We call them as a OOPS programming. If you say, is it a Salesforce is a oops? Yes, that is definitely Salesforce is a oops. That's the reason in the real time, whenever we call the table names, like account is an object, contact is an object. We call them, these are objects. Account is an object, right? And contact is an object. Whatever you see here, if you click on this, you all, these all are objects. Invoice is an object. LMS is an object. We call them as an object. Right? In the OOPS, there are three things are there. In OOPS, especially for the Salesforce side, there are three things are there. One is classes. Second one is object. Third one is method. Third one is method. What is the classes? What is the class? A class is a template. This is a standard definition for any language, any programming language. A class is a template or blueprint or a blueprint from which the objects are created. If you are learning Java or if you are learning .NET, this is what they explain. They explain the OOPS concept and they will explain the what is the class. This is a definition is common in the entire world. What is the class means? Class is a template or it's a blueprint. For what? From which objects that are created. Right? Again, this class is consist of three things. These classes consist of three things. Variable, method, class, right? Again, the class is divided into the three types. Variable, class, Variable, method, and class. Now we all know the class, right? Oops, has a class. Again, class is also has a class. Okay, I'll show you that how it is going to be the class inside one more class. I'm going to show that. But we know what is a class. Class is a, it is a template, or it is a structure, or it is a blueprint, or it is a design or it is a skeleton. You can call anything, template, design, skeleton. From the skeleton, we create a body. 
from the skeleton we create objects or from this structure we create we, we create a buildings or we build something so they are a basic element of oops concept if you have to start writing the program you have to know that oops concept in the oops concept what are the different things we have to use variable method class we know what is the variable we know methods because i have already explained in the 11 out of this 11 we have already talked about the variables right methods and classes right again these classes there are two types of classes we have again these classes we have two types of classes one is the parent class and second one is child class second one is child class parent class what is a parent class in terms of salesforce we call outer class we call outer class or we call master class or we call top class right what is the child class is called in the salesforce we call them as an inner class we call them as inherited class we call them as a secondary class different names for the parent class and child class right now let's go ahead and write the program how to write the program program go to the setup apex classes open this you will find apex classes here click on that Okay, on top, you will see there are a couple of buttons are there here. Okay, so here developer console first button. When you say developer console first button, if you click on this, it will open your developer console, this one, right? So by default, it will open that. So it will open the developer console. If you wanted to create a new Apex class, then you have to click on new Apex. Let's click on the new Apex classes. Click on new button. Okay. And the class always starts with the access modifiers. Like, right? Access modifiers. I have explained access modifier. There are three types of access modifiers. Public, private, global. Public, private, global. Right now, I'm going with the public access modifier. Public. So I'm writing the, I'm writing public is the access modifier. Then we have to use the keyword called class. And then name of your class. Let's assume that this is my first class right access modifier after that keyword called class then this is my class name you can give any class name now open close open curly brace and close the curly brace now this is the class right this is the class skeleton struct right skeleton or it is a blueprint if i click on quick save it doesn't give me any error because I am just implemented a class. It's a just a blueprint. There is no logic. Nothing is there. It's a just a blueprint. Right? And what did I say inside the class? There are three. Three different things are available. What are those? First one is variable. Right? Zero, one, variable. And second one, method, right? Third one, class. These are three different types are available inside the class, 
right and how to comment in the class you have to put slash this slash is nothing but backward slash i guess yeah to backward slash is nothing but it's a commenting Okay, so this is a forward slash to forward slash is nothing but commenting, right? If I wanted to comment and write something here, for example, if I wanted to comment on top of the class saying that created date, created date 13-06-2022, right? So that means I'm commenting it. If you want to comment it, you have to put two forward slashes. Right. Now let's understand how to declare a variable method class. Right. Now first I'll look, go with declaring a class. Can I declare, I have already outer classes already there. Can I declare again one more class inside this class? Is it possible in Salesforce? Is it possible in Apex? Yes, it is possible. Public, public, class, I can say inner class, right? Quick save. It did not give me any error. It did not give me any error. That means can I declare like outer, inner, again, one more inner. Can I declare like this? Public class, inner, two class. Can I do this? Again, one more class inside the inner class. No, you cannot declare this. You cannot declare grand child. You cannot declare the grand child. Salesforce is only allows one level down. Only one level down. That means you can create a parent class, child class, which is nothing but an outer class, inner class. But you cannot create a grand inner class or grand grand inner class. You cannot create it. The class which you can create is one is outer class, which is a complete blueprint. And then inside that you can create another inner class. Now you cannot go more down to that. Okay, that's fine. But can I create a multiple inner classes? Yes, you can create a multiple inner classes. If you want to create inner class two, right? Inner class three. Yes, you can do this. One level down, you can do it. But two levels down, you cannot do it. Which is not acceptable by the sales force. Right? So this is what we will declare the class inside the class. How to, how to start the creating a class? It has to be always started with the access modifier. Either I can use a public, either I can use a private, or I can use a global, right? After the access modifier, we have to use the keyword called class. Then we can give the name of the class. No, this is fine. Yes, we have understood what is how to declare a class inside the class. Now, coming to the second one is like variable. How to do the variable? We can declare, for example, let's see integer a equal to 5. I'm initializing it. Integer y equal to 10. And let's say integer r result now r equal to i'm multiplying both of the variables now can i do this logic we used to do this logic in anonymous window in the developer console right can i do this logic 
what I am doing, I am declaring the variable here and I am assigning the value to the variable. I am declaring the variable and assigning the value to the variable, which is fine, right? Which is a fine, yes. But here, when you say R equal to A multiply Y, something we are doing a business logic here. We are implementing a business logic here, right? Does Salesforce accept that business logic directly inside the parent class? No, it does not accept. It does not accept business logic directly in the class. You can declare the variables. You can declare the variables. There is no issue that inside the class, you can declare the variables. Whatever the variables you want, you can declare it. But if you want to implement a logic, if you want to implement a business logic, you have to use methods. You have to use method. You have to use methods. Again, we have a method. There are two types of methods are there, right? One is a static method and non-static method. Static method, non-static method. Again, it is divided into the void, non-void. Void and non-void. Again, it is divided into the void and non-void. Don't worry, I'll show you that how to declare a methods. But remember that if you want to write any business logic, if you want to write any business logic, it has to be always inside the method. You can declare the variable. As many variables you want, you can declare it within this. So what is this? This is the zero one dot variables. This is the variable declaration. Now, let's go and how to declare a methods, right? For method declaration also, we have to start with access modifier public. And in here the keyword is, you have to, for now, let's use the void. For now, let's use the void. Void is the keyword. And what are we doing? Calculating the area. Let's simply write calculate, calculate area. Right? Method will have a open close brackets and then curly bracket. Right? So this is the method how we declare it. This is the method how we declare it. Now inside method. Now I can simply write my logic. Whatever the logic is available, I can simply implement that. And also I can implement the system.debug. I can write the system.debug here and let's print the system.debug of what, what is the value that we are printing? The result. Area of calculation result I'm printing it. So this is a method declaration. And we have seen the class, right? How to declare a class. Now how to declare a class? I can simply use the access modifier public for the class. The keyword is class. And let's say that this is an inner A. Right? Okay, class does not have this open close brackets. Only methods will be having a open close. Wherever you declare a method, it has to be open and close brackets. Open and close bracket. Now let me save this. Let's see whether it is giving me any error or not. There is no error. Perfectly fine. I can click on save. Right? It is displaying created date public class, my class, and this is the variable declaration, and this is the method declaration, and this is the class. 
right? So as soon as you create it, let me go ahead and show you in the developer console how it looks like. Click on developer console. File. File, open resource. Here it is. Enter the name, copy the name here, enter in the open resource or you can enter here. Either you can go to the open resource or you can click on the open. If you click on the open, there is a model box will be opened here. Then select the classes here, select the classes and type your Apex class name here. As soon as you type, this is a filter. Highlight this, select this, and then click on it, open. It will open your class, right? This is your class. Now again, repeating it again, go to the Apex classes, click on a new, right? When you click on a new, you will see the two tabs. One is the Apex class and another tab is version setting. In version setting, you will see salesforce.com API version. That means the current Salesforce version, right? What is the current Salesforce version is 55, right? Okay, so the Salesforce version is 55. Now let me go ahead and implement another Apex class. Okay. If I have to implement another Apex class, then I have to use access modifier public right class. Let's say this is my second class. Right? This is my second class. Now inside this, let me declare a variable. For variable also, I can use the access modifier. Before whatever we have implemented Apex classes, what we did, we simply written the integer. Integer, let's say p integer t for integer r integer result. This is what we have declared it, right? This is what we have declared. Click save. Integer at line five, case sensitive. Case sensitive always has to be start with capital. Sorry. Okay, quick save. There is a spelling mistake. Sorry. Okay. Integer. Integer P, integer T, integer R, or integer result. Now I can use the access modifier for variable declaration as well. Like I can use the public integer, T, public integer, T, public integer, or public integer result. Quick save, right? There is no issue with that. So I can use the access modifier to the class, access modifier to the variable, access modifier to the method. I can use the access modifier for either class, either variable, either method, I can use it. Now let me go ahead and implement a method public. Let's use the void. And I'm calculating the simple interest. Calculating the simple interest. This is a method, method declaration. So inside method, I can write the business logic. Result. Result equal to simple calculation is P multiply T multiply R by 100.
okay so let me declare another variable which you say maturity of amount so what i can say ma equal to result plus p p plus result now let me go ahead and print this system dot debug let's keep some text here the interest accumulated is what is that result the value in the result let me print maturity of amount also let me print ma so the final maturity amount including interest is where i'm storing the maturity of amount i'm storing in ma now let me save this yes it's saved right it's saved now do not worry how to execute this program do not worry about that now let's understand how to declare a class how to declare a class how to use a variable how to declare a method how to declare a variable how to declare a class inside the class let's understand that now we are not so hurry to execute the code execute the code we'll do it later how to execute the apex class code we will see it later but right now our focus is how to declare it now we created this class now let me go to the developer console file open what is my class name my second class it doesn't come here what is the reason it is not coming here i have to click on refresh then it comes because i have implemented in salesforce right on the salesforce i have implemented as soon as i implement this, this was already open in order to first sync if it is your class is if your developer console is already open and something you have implemented a apex class in the salesforce so what do you have to do first you have to refresh this force.com this developer console you have to refresh it then you will see your class click on open see you could see this information right and apex class name always has a extension like apxc apxc it's similar like excel similar like excel when you store the excel you will see the dot xls right if you are saving the csv file you will see dot csv same thing for the apex classes it is always apxc apex class it is always apxc whenever you see that like if you wanted to search if you wanted to search there are 100 classes are there and 100 triggers are there so how oh many triggers are there you don't know where to search it what you can do if you wanted to know only apex details only apex classes you wanted to know how many are there so simply you can put start that apxc all the apex classes within the org within the salesforce org you will see everything here you will see everything here all the apex classes names will have the extension here apxc right now let me go ahead till now what we did we use the variable we use the primitive data type 
using the primitive data type we declared integer p integer p integer r integer result integer m these all are primitive data type right now how to use our s object how to use our s object in the class let me declare the class first public class and my class name my s object cls my s object cls that is my class name now directly i am writing the method i'm not declaring any variables here so in order to start writing the method i have to use the access modifier so i'm using the public for now i'm using the void let's give the method name is create account i'm going to create a account i'm going to create a account now we all know we used to do in the developer console how to create a account right first thing i have to initialize the account i have to initialize the account so that there is a container or space gets created at the database let's initialize the account now in the account i have a mandatory field name right let me give some name here let's say creating record from apex and we'll give another field account dot phone let's take the phone phone number let's give it 999 we can take as many as fields that we wanted to insert while creating the account fax fax is another api field in the account Seven seven, right? I can use the industry also. We have a industry field in the account. See, this is not a new for us. We used to do in developer console. We used to do in anonymous window. Same thing I am writing here, but inside the method I am declaring it. I cannot write the business business logic. directly into the class i cannot write the business logic in inside the class directly if i have to implement the business logic method has to be declared in order to declare a method i have to start with the access modifier either public or private or global and then i have to use void or static void for now for today we will go with void later we'll explain what are those Okay. Once we have all the information, we can simply insert this. Right? This is same thing we used to do in the developer console. If I go to the developer console debug, right? Here it is. We used to do this, right? What I did? I took out this anonymous window. Like we practiced everything in the anonymous window. Now we are ready to do the programming. We are done with the testing part. i can i am ready to play at the ground like a cricket before going to the cricket they have to practice it right so the practicing will be in the small ground once they are perfect they, they are ready they will go to the ground where actual cricket is going to happen right so same thing here i have practiced my code i have practiced my code in the anonymous window now i am now i am bit confident what to do how to write the business logic so i am going ahead and implementing the apex class same thing i have written in the method same thing i have written in the method so far is it clear or any questions what we have discussed so far transactional control which is a database save point how to roll back when we updated how to roll back and then 
we understood the oops concept everybody any programming language whether you take java dotnet c++ sap any programming language you take the first thing they are going to explain is oops because they all are in the oops same thing salesforce is also oops and say oops has classes object method inside the classes we have a variable method classes we have seen some examples how to declare a class with variable method class this is what we have seen so far in the uh, while implementing the program now i can copy this i'll go to the developer console file either i can click on open resource or i can click on a open if i click on a open if i type here i'll not find anything because i have to refresh my developer console i have to refresh my developer console i have not saved let's go ahead and save now back to the developer console refresh here it is i got it right this is what we have implemented in the salesforce is it clear any questions no worry okay good so tomorrow we'll go ahead further uh, we will see how to execute the apex classes we will see more about declaration of the variable more about the method void non void static non static we will see those kind of examples and this is what we do in the real time this is what we do in the real time we simply declare a class okay but the, there are coding standards here okay right now i'm not teaching you about the coding standards i'm just explaining you how to create a class once we are a confident then we can come up with the coding standards okay so this is what we do it in the real time we declare the variables and we will create a method inside the method we will write a logic and we write a classes we write a wrapper class but same thing we will do it so here whatever i am creating i am creating the account and let's take another uh, there is a real time scenario okay i have an offeree.com in the offeree.com there is a open position one of the candidate is interested in that open position so when the person opens the that particular uh, requirement or that particular whatever the open position is there he has to fill first name last name and email id what are the skills he has been working on then he has to click on a submit as soon as the candidate click on a submit the nowpri information has to go to the salesforce inside the salesforce there should be a record created either a contact record or could be a account record okay let's take a contact record because we are creating a person information right each contact information we are creating it so as soon as the candidate click on a submit salesforce has to capture the data that was entered by the candidate and it should immediately create a record in the contact object so in the in those scenarios what we write is like we simply initialize the contact and we'll give whatever the information that was entered by the user will not hard code it here i have hard coded but using the some kind of integration or those things we will capture those information from the nokri.com and once we have the all the mandatory information will create a contact so that my nokri database and salesforce database will be in a sync so this is one scenario one real time scenario but overall this is what we do in the real time but it will be more complex instead of a simple like this it will be more complex we'll see going further we'll create we'll, we'll create a more complex classes and we'll see some more examples with the real time and we'll understand what is the void method and what is the non void method what is the static what is the non static we will understand everything so do not worry if you have any questions we'll meet tomorrow come up with the questions if you have anything practice it uh we'll meet tomorrow same time thank you so much for attending the class